morning. So I had an epiphany last night. I was on the phone for about an hour and a half with my niece's kindergarten teacher. Um, for those of you who don't know, my little brother's in the Navy, and so he's out there serving and protecting us right now. And in the meantime, my niece is with my parents. And, you know, they're a little bit older, and so they're not as tech savvy as some of us would be. And so my mom tends to be a little frazzled and frustrated with this entire um, homeschooling process. And so yesterday, my niece missed her class. She had, um, it was a video class that the teacher had set up. And for some odd reason, it wasn't on Savannah's calendar. There was nothing actually on her calendar. She wasn't getting the phone calls. The teacher said she was calling um, them and it, nothing was coming through. So I added, cause I have added so many apps for my niece's programming to help my mom onto all my devices. It's crazy. Um, but I added it and I went in and I ended up just calling the teacher because the teacher kept saying, I'm calling you guys, I'm calling you guys. So I called her. And so we started walking through it. She shared her screen with me and um, it turned out to be um, such a simple fix. <laughs> guys, middle initials really do matter. Um, and turns out she had invited the wrong Savannah. Go figure. So um, Savannah's set up now. She's good to go for tomorrow's class. Um, I know she's super excited because she's a little bit of a nerd like me and she was really stressed about missing out on her class yesterday. But um, while I was on the phone with the teacher, I happened to notice, well, we first of all, we set her up. One of our other students was having some issues, and so we fixed that, hopefully. We did as much as we could do until um, that child's mother was able to accept an invite, and apparently she works late um, evening. So Hopefully today her mom, the mom will be able to get in there and accept the invite and there won't be any issues. I hope, fingers crossed. Um, but then I was looking at the calendar and I noticed that the teacher only had calendar invites or calendar things scheduled for this week. And she had mentioned in passing that she was going to be spending um, the weekends going in and re sending these invites for the same meetings for next week and the following week, basically the entire month of April. And so I asked, you know, is it the same exact meeting? And she said, yes. And I said, well, do you know that you can set a recurring meeting so that you don't have to go in and manually add it? And she had no idea. So I walked her through and we did two of them together. And so now she knows how to do it and she's gonna um, set everything up and I just saved her like so much time and frustration of having to redo her entire calendar each weekend for that week. Um, but it made me realize something. I see a lot of posts on social media, I'm not judging, but I see a lot of posts of parents being frustrated about, you know, the homeschooling and, you know, figuring out all these different apps and figuring out the schedules for their kids and while they're trying to work, you know, because most people are also working from home while educating these kids and I get it. But what I'm not seeing is any sort of gratitude for the teachers or um, acknowledgement of what's going on with them. Um, Miss Payne ended up becoming emotional at one point during our call because we were talking about you know, what happens if they don't open schools again for the school year? And she was saying how much she's gonna miss being with her kids and she's gonna miss seeing them and how much, you know, she gets out of seeing them every day. And, you know, it just made me think a lot. The teachers are also going through this transition and especially, you know, the older ones, they're also not tech savvy. So there's a lot of stuff that um, people in my generation and younger just take for granted. We know how to set up Outlook recurring calendar of invites because it's just what we've been doing forever for us, you know, but other people are not, this is completely foreign to them. And so if you have educators in your social circle, whether they're family, friends, I think it's great. It would be a great opportunity, a great time just to reach out to them, check in on them, see how they're one, first of all, coping with this transition. And second of all, how you might be able to help them, um, because I think a lot of them are just kind of like struggling through it and pushing through it and trying to figure it out. And if we can help them, let's be honest, educating is a labor of love. Nobody becomes a teacher because they're trying to make bank. We don't pay these teachers anything near what they should be receiving um, for teaching the future. That's a whole other conversation we can have. I'm not gonna do that today. Um, but 
you know, this is about, they, they're in this for a passion. And I think a lot of them are not reaching out for help where they should just because they, you know, we like to do things on our own anyway. Like it's just kind of human nature. I know I'm stubborn as hell and I swear I can do everything on my own. Um, but we do need to reach out for help, but we also should just reach out to the people that we know and love and see if they need any assistance that we might be able to provide. Um, anyway, this has gone way longer than planned. I have to get to work. We have a Zoom call today. I don't know what we're Zooming about. I really don't. We get emails, we've had phone calls, but my boss discovered Zoom on Friday and so we have a Zoom call. So let me figure out what we're doing, figure out what we're Zooming about and um, have an awesome day guys, bye.